what's up? I'm Caroline from carolinevencil.com and I am here today to answer some of my readers' questions with you. So let's get into it. The first question that I got was about selling to your list. Okay. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. You're not. First off, you're not. <laughs> back to it. Uh, whenever I email my list about a product, no one buys. And you, I know you say to send out more than one email, but to hear crickets after just one email makes me scared to send another. Plus I got people who unsubscribed and it's making it easy to not want to send any more emails about my products. Okay. Let's break this down a little bit. So first off, are you doing something wrong when you are promoting your products to your email list? No. No, we are helping our people with the products that we create. Therefore, you could not be doing anything wrong by telling your people about a product that you have for sale. Right there. So we're getting rid of that guilt. We're saying there's no more guilt about selling at all because, again, our products are helping our people. They're solving a problem that they have. We have an answer that our people need, and we're giving it to them in the form of a product. So there's that part. Second, if you are not seeing sales after one email, if this is the first time you've ever brought up your product, if you just like decide today, like, you know what? I made this product last week. I'm going to sell it to my audience. This is the first time you've ever told them about it. You haven't um, drummed up any kind of excitement or been like, hey, guess what? something's coming this week. Something's coming in two days. Something's coming tomorrow. If you've not done any of that like pre-launch stuff, you're probably not going to see a whole bunch of sales coming in after the first email. And depending on the size of your list and the way that you've positioned it and everything, you might not see any. That's okay. That does not mean don't send another email about this product again. That's not what it means at all. Because here's the thing that we need to remember is people need to be exposed to something. And I can't remember the actual number. It's either seven or nine times before they're ready to buy. So like, think about all of the emails that you get. I got so many emails about sales this weekend. So many emails about sales this weekend. But do you know the ones that I actually paid attention to and thought about buying were the ones that emailed every day, were the ones that emailed and brought up their sale again and again and again. Not because I really need any more bath and body. I always think I always have to think about bath and body works or bed, bath and beyond. Not that I need any more bath and body works hand soaps because I don't. I don't. I have a crazy hoarder stockpile. I don't need any more. But guess who thought about buying more because they emailed me every single day reminding me of their sale. That's where I was. That's where my brain was. So even think about things that you see on TV. Like, I'm not going to buy that. And then you see it again. You're like, hmm, kind of more neutral. It goes from negative to neutral to positive. Sometimes. Sometimes people are just like, yes, I do need this. Like, so excited to buy. Sometimes people need to be exposed to things more often, and maybe it's the phrasing that needs to change. Maybe it's just that they didn't really see the pitch, especially if you have your mention of this product at like the bottom of your email. If we're talking about like maybe you have like one line of, if you like this email, you should buy my product. That's not going to stand out. Maybe it's just like a, if you like this, click here. I've seen that inside of emails before from my customer or from clients who are like, what am I doing wrong? Well, your email is a thousand words long. And the only thing in there that's selling your actual product is the word click here linked at the very bottom. There's no mention of what it is or how it's going to help them. It's just, if you like this, click here. And that's not going to be selling. And then if that's the only selling that you'd ever done, and then you turn around and are like, but nobody bought my product. I guess I must just suck at selling. Flag on the play. That's not true. Because the truth is, again, people just didn't see it. That's, that's all that it is. It doesn't mean that you suck at selling. It doesn't mean that your product sucks. None of that is true. It just means that people didn't see it. So what you have to do is you have to sell more than once. You have to send more than one email. You have to mention your product more than once in order for people to actually be exposed to it and be ready to buy. People can't know that something is for sale if you don't tell them. And that's where kind of that marketing aspect comes in. That's where it does change a little bit where you know that you need to change it from, I have this product, maybe you should buy it buried somewhere deep inside of an email and actually sending out 
you know, a flash sale sequence of three days where you have four emails where the entire point of those emails is to sell the product. It doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, buried at the bottom of a super helpful email in order for you to be allowed to sell your product. That's not the case. You want to make sure that your people see that it's for sale in order for them to buy it. That's what we want. That's what your people want. They want the help that you have. If you don't tell them that you have help to give them, that's where the problem comes in. Now, on to the part where you said or where the question asked the question asker. Sure. It says, um, I get people who unsubscribed from that email, that one email that was sent about this product. And it's making her gun shy about wanting to send another. Totally get that. I totally get that. However, however, if you have an email that nobody bought from, and then you have an email that people like one or two people unsubscribed from, and now that's making you scared to send another email, that's problematic. So we don't want the unsubscribe rate to be the reason that we don't send another email. We don't want pe- we don't want to feel like oh no, if I send an email, people are going to unsubscribe. The truth is I've sent out emails where um, I'm not selling anything. There's not a single thing for sale. There's not even a link for people to click. Now I don't do that anymore, obviously, but it was just an email giving free help, free advice, free support, free encouragement, free funniness, whatever it is, or even just going over to a YouTube channel, but that is a link, but you get the point. I'm just giving. I'm not asking for anybody to do anything. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking them to sign up for a wait list, go watch a free training, nothing like that. And people still unsubscribe. People still unsubscribe. I had a friend who um, announced her pregnancy to her email list and was like, hey, guess something else that's coming this summer. And it's her pregnancy. And she got people who unsubscribe. The reality is people will unsubscribe from any email that you send. It's not necessarily like you irked them, you annoyed them, you bugged them, like you sold something and that was wrong to them. First off, selling is not wrong. So there's that. But That's kind of the thing that is holding a lot of people back is like, oh, no, somebody unsubscribed from this email. People will unsubscribe from any email. Somebody will unsubscribe from any email that you send. That does not mean that you stop sending the emails. It just means that we have to accept the idea of it's it's not me. It's you, person who unsubscribed. And that's okay. You are not my person. You are not my people. And that's okay. I hope that you find your people. That's how I try to view it. I even stopped, I completely stopped looking at my unsubscribe rate. And instead, the only things, the metrics that I focus on, that I encourage everybody to focus on, not because I think that I'm the best thing in the world, but because of the fact that it's much more uplifting to look at these numbers are your open rate and your click rate. How many people clicked on things? How many people opened it? You want to see those numbers going up rather than worrying about your unsubscribe rate. Those are not your people and that's okay. We're going to take a Kate Doster-ism because I think that this is my favorite line that I ever heard. And it's, it is a privilege to be on my email list. It is a privilege to be on my email list. And that's how we want to go forward. And that applies for everything that you send to your email list, whether that is a freebie or a YouTube video link or an Instagram link or just an advice email or even, yes, selling to your people. It is a privilege to be on your list and to be privy to you selling to your people. There it is. So I hope that you guys um, are not afraid of sending an email, especially promoting your products, um, because your products are awesome. Your products are awesome. And your people are going to need that help going forward. They need to have, they need to hear what you have to say. They need to have the product that you've worked hard to create because you know your people. So you're doing them a disservice by not emailing them. So we're going to change the way that we look at this. It's not bad to send emails, send more emails, and don't quit after sending your first sales email and nobody buys. That's not a bad thing. It just means that you need to keep sending emails. And then at the end of the sale, then we can talk about kind of maybe changing up a strategy for next time. So there it is. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope that you learned a lot. I hope that helped you. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like, and leave your comments. Or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.